G'day ladies and gentle tubers. So I've got this beautiful old 1971 Datsun 521 pickup that I'm doing a little bit of work to. The thing I'm most excited about doing is putting some Wilwood front disc brakes on it instead of these old drums. And in saying that, if you're also planning on chucking some front disc brakes on your old Datsun truck, you better watch this one first. Because as easy as the kit looks to install, there are a few hurdles you'll need to jump. And just be wary of going on auto part supply stores and ordering everything you think you'll need because they don't have all of the right parts listed for this old truck, including this front wheel bearing. This is the inner front wheel bearing and Nissan no longer make it. So I've had to buy this NTN Heavy Industries bearing. It's a 302-32. It's good for about 20,000 RPM, but it is not an automotive part. Good thing is it's actually overkill. And where do you find it? But on Amazon. And I'm going to leave the link in the description below. It was the easiest place I could find to source these and they still took about two weeks to arrive. If you're doing a full frame off restoration like I am, you'll find that this is the case for a few different parts on the vehicle, including for some reason there are no left side tie rods, only right side and the inner axle seal on the rear wheels is also a strange part that is actually a Nissan forklift part now. Thank God there's lots of Datsun forums and Facebook pages to pick the brains of people to get the right parts and to find out where to get them from. You might also be able to tell that Thriftway's got a few good deals on beef this week. And speaking of beef, if anyone's got issues with the way I pack bearing grease, well, too bad, that's the way I do it. I'm not a big fan on spending lots of money on tools I will only use the once, so I'm using a piece of flat bar steel to drive the seals home, and that's perfectly good for me as well. Not that I'm opposed to anyone giving me grief in the comments, it certainly makes things more enjoyable as a content creator. Anyway, here we go, we're chucking the kit onto the original spindle and we're nearly at where the problems start. Firstly, this particular truck has a left and a right side hub. They've actually got different numbers stamped on them, so when you take yours off your truck, make sure that you've labelled it left and right so that you can put them back on the right side. And it's simply a matter of slipping the hub back on over the old spindle. I like to use the end of my socket to tap it in nice and straight, and then I use the crown nut to make sure it's seated correctly. Obviously you don't over tighten this crown nut, it's a finger tight situation, uh, but it's nice to use the socket so that you don't get grease all over your fingers. Then I set up the brake caliper with the brake pads for the first time. Mount the disc and attempt to screw the brake caliper in place on its bracket only to find that the kit manufacturer had not tapped out the holes with the appropriate size tap for the bolts that they supplied with their kit. In fact it was the appropriate sized tap it's just that they had obviously used one that had been resharpened a lot and the actual thread sizes were just a smidge smaller than what they needed to be. So I had to re-tap the threads. If you're going to use a power tool to re-tap the threads like I have done here, just make sure you start the thread by hand before you use the driver. 
otherwise you could cross thread the bracket. This isn't quite a showstopper, but it is a little annoying when you pay good money for something that isn't fit for purpose. And then we go for attempt number two. Everything looks pretty good and the bolts actually go in the holes this time or at least the bottom hole and then for some reason not in the top hole. After pulling it all apart and checking for tolerances and clearances, I find that the brake pad itself fouls on the bracket that's made by the manufacturer. And while I could remove the bracket and grind it so that the pad fits to the bracket, I found it much easier to grind the brake pad itself so that the brake pad will then have clearance over the bracket. It was simply a matter of taking the edge off one of the corners as you can see here. And then finally, third time lucky, everything goes back together again. Once again, none of this was a deal breaker and it is far easier to buy this kit than it is to try and get a different manufacturer's non-specific disc brake set to fit on these old trucks. But it would be nice if the manufacturer of this particular kit would have a little bit more quality control and maybe make sure that the product doesn't get built on a Friday afternoon when everyone wants to walk out the door. All in all, it's a flashy, nice little addition to the truck. And then I go ahead and cover it up with solid steel wheels, uh, which don't quite fit. So I use a 10 mil spacer to mount them. And I probably will have to go and buy different wheels for the truck once it's finished anyway, as I really don't like using spacers on wheel mountings. Thanks for watching and I hope this helped you guys build your little truck. Once again, the links to all the parts are in the description below. And thanks for watching Build Grow Play.